Welcome to Short Stop on Pool. I'm Bob. From time to time, I have had requests to go over my gear. What kind of camera equipment, camcorders, uh, webcam, tripods, microphones do I use? And here it is. I have Amazon affiliate links in the description for most of the items that are seen here. So if you're interested in one of these and you decide to purchase, if you use the affiliate link in the description, helps me out a little bit. There are great videos on YouTube about each of these items that go into depth in reviewing all the different features of all of them. And I'm not going to do that. Let's try and keep this short and sweet. I'm just going to describe how I use them and what I like about them. I record in two different places in a couple of different ways. I record at the pool hall, and usually that's when I'm making a run attempt, and then that video might become a rack of the week or an instructional video. Sometimes I live stream from the pool hall. And then I also record here at home, and this is my pool table at home. It's a practice table shoved in the corner. So I have a couple different ways that I use my cameras here. And then off to the side, I won't show you that, but my, my desk with my uh, desktop computer, uh, and I'll, I'll film there. A lot of the time I'll do the commentary for the Rack of the Week with a webcam pointing at me. That's probably the best place to start with this camera. This little webcam is a Nexigo 980p, I believe it is. Look in the description, you'll see the link to it. This is a 1080p resolution camera. And this is probably the third webcam that I've purchased. I like this webcam. It works really well, although it is very basic. But it can be had at a pretty good price. It's really standard, and it has this little brackety thing that clips on your computer monitor so you can have it look at you and you, you do your selfie videos. And I'll use this almost exclusively to do the capture of my face when I'm doing Rack of the Week and other videos. The one drawback to this camera is it's manual focus. So you've actually got to turn this little knob on the front to focus it. And that's a little weird, but I really pretty much just use this in one location on my, uh, on my computer. And so I've got the focus set for that distance. Uh, it's a wide-angle lens, as most uh, selfie webcams are, so it's really hard, uh, really easy to set the focus anyway. Uh, a few months ago, this camera, this is the Brio 4K uh, webcam, and I'm showing it to you in just the camera format. It comes with the same brackety thing to clip on your monitor, and that simply uh, snaps into the bottom here. But I don't use that because... The, it's, it's a one quarter inch threaded adapter. And I have above my table here, my practice table at home, I have a little uh, ball head on a clamp mounted to a, uh, some wood suspended from the ceiling. But the whole point is to get this camera at the end of, of the pool table so that you can see the whole table. And that's kind of the standard view that you usually see when you watch professional uh, pool matches on YouTube. The camera will be way up high up at the end of the table. The reason, there's a couple reasons why I bought the Brio. It, it has autofocus, and plus you can adjust the focus with the software on your computer as well, along with the exposure and a lot of other features. But this particular camera has three zoom modes. You can, go, you can zoom in, normal, and wide angle. So you can use this on your computer monitor as a selfie camera in the wide angle view. And I, I believe that when I have it over the pool table, I'm not sure if it's in wide or, or normal, probably in normal. But I'll also use this at the pool hall when I want to do a live stream because it's a higher quality lens and a higher quality camera. And uh, at the pool hall, sometimes the setup is such that the, the, the camera itself is even farther away from the pool table. So I can go into the software and tell it to zoom in a little bit and still get a good picture. This is a 4K camera, so real high resolution. Uh, of course, it'll also do 1080p. And I mostly use it in 1080p. So I'll give you a little tip from what I learned about this particular camera, which applies to all 4K cameras. This will record 4K, which is really high resolution, which creates massive files on your computer. Not a big deal if you've got the, the hard drive space for them, but just be aware of that, aware of that. And then the other thing you need to be aware of is this is the cable that came with the, the Brio. 
And it, I don't want to unravel it right now, but it might be like five to six feet long. It's pretty good length. But that's not long enough if you want to put this camera up on the end of your pool table. You need a, a, a longer cable. If you're going to do 1080p, it's not a big deal. Uh, there are lots of extension cables. Well, I don't have one, but you know what I'm talking about. There are lots of USB extension cables that you can get, which will work in a USB 2.0 or 3.0 plug into your computer. But if you want to do 4K video, the average extension cable will not work. You need a really high quality. And I, uh, I've bought a couple of extension cables on the internet that say they are USB 3.0 compatible and 4K video compatible. But when I, when I get them in the mail and hook them up, they do not work in 4K. So you've got to be real careful with that. And it's an issue because when you're mounting this camera up at the, you know, way up high at the end of a pool table, you might have a run to go to get the cable to your computer. This adapter, believe it or not, does work with 4K video. And I don't know why this works and other things don't. I think if your extension cable gets too long, this might be like four feet long. And this is actually a USB hub, so it has more ports here. But this is a 3.0 USB hub, and I'll put a link to this specific one in the description. This one will do 4K. For some reason, the, the, you, know, you can get the 10, 15, 20 foot extension cables. And they'll say 3.0 and for 4K video, but no, they're not going to work in my experience. But this one does work. So in a combination with the, the cable that came with the Brio 4K, I got a nut, just enough length to get over to my, uh, my computer at my desk right over here. Um, in the pool hall, it's not a big deal because if I'm live streaming, my laptop is usually right below the tripod and... And this cable is plenty long enough. So that's the issue with the 4K, with the 4K video. Um, other than that, I'm really happy with this Brio. This is an excellent, excellent camera. You, you can control all kinds of features, saturation and hue and zoom and a whole bunch of other features in the software. It does have a microphone. Forget about microphones in webcams. They do not work. You can see my microphone right here. This is a Shure MV7. Um, for the first year or so, I was using one of those round, what are they called, the Zen? I don't remember what they're called. One of those round ones with the little dinky tripod. And it, it's pretty good. It was like a $50 microphone, and the quality wasn't bad. But this is a step up, and it costs a little bit more. I think this is like uh, 250 bucks or in that range. But if, if you don't want to buy a, a you know, $1,000 professional microphone, this is the way to go, in my opinion. I did a lot of research and went to YouTube University. This is the Shure MV7. Been using this for a long time now, and, and uh, the quality is, is really up the, the audio quality um, within reason. When I'm shooting on the pool table here at home, I'll use this microphone on a boom, either on a boom and it's about six feet away from the table, or sometimes I'll actually put it on top of the light. And so the microphone can actually hang down kind of in the center of the table above the light and it'll pick up my voice and my pool sounds. You can control a lot of the features of this microphone with the software. One of the big things is it has a near and far mode. So at this moment in time, I'm in far mode. And so my mouth is, is like a foot away from the microphone. So in far mode, you're, you're going to be 8 to 12 inches and up to 4 or 5 feet away. And, and get good quality. Now, the farther you get away, the more echoey and, and the little bit, the quality drops off a little bit. But I'm thinking at this distance, you're getting real good quality. You, when you set it to near mode, you usually want your, your mouth to be like right up against it. And so you'll see some people talking with this microphone or similar ones, and their, their face is right next to it like that. That's going to be the best quality, and that's what you have to do with a microphone like this and you set it to near mode in the software. I almost always use far mode because I don't want to be, um, when I'm, when I'm uh, narrating videos at my computer, I've got this microphone hanging right above my head. So it's just out of view of the selfie camera right up here above my head, you know, maybe 12 inches away. The, this little tripod does not come with the microphone. This is just a tripod I've had for years. 
Um, normally this is mounted on a boom, which is this. For a long time I was using this microphone on the, this little tripod, even when I was narrating. But this has been a game changer for me. This is a Rode PSA-1 uh, boom. And I've got it contracted right now. Let me, I'll take the rubber band off so you can real, see real quick. And this is a great value. You can get a lot of booms for your microphone. So this is the clamp. It clamps onto your desktop or shelf. And then this goes in here. And it, it's going to spring up on me because it needs the weight of a microphone to hold the arm down. But as you can see, you get a lot of adjustability with that. And I have a, a shelf above my computer. So this clamp is mounted to the shelf above my head, and then the boom come down, comes down like this and hangs the microphone above me. It, it just gets the microphone off from the desktop, and you can, you can move it exactly into place, and when you don't need it, you just swing it out of the way. So that's been a game changer for me. Um, I did a good bit of research on these, these uh, microphone booms. You can get some cheap booms that might look pretty much just like this and cost like... 30 bucks maybe, don't do it. Go ahead and spring the extra money. I think these are like, what, 130 or so. Maybe you can find one for 100 bucks. I think they're about 130 bucks. Uh, well worth it. Really good build quality, and this is going to last a long time. Thing, it's not going to wear out and, and get rickety over time. It's going to keep working for a long time. The camera that I use the most is actually not here because it's filming me right now. And that's my cell phone. And honestly, that's, that's the first thing that I started with. I used almost exclusively until, until I started picking up little pieces of other gear. Um, I have a Samsung Galaxy A71. Now, the cell phone doesn't matter, and you won't find that in the description, because there are a 100 different cell phones that will work. Any cell phone made in the last year or two is going to have a pretty good camera with 1080p resolution. And that's, that's all you need. An iPhone, Samsung, whatever brand, make sure you have 1080p. And uh, you're probably going to do all right, especially if the phone was released within the last 12 months or so. So I'll use my cell phone with this little guy at the pool hall, almost exclusively. And this guy is <laughs> one of the best values out there. I think it's less than $15. So it's just a little tripod with a cell phone clamp but it telescopes, okay? So you get lots of versatility out of this thing. I can record with this here at home on the practice table and just set it on the table and get a lower angle. I can extend it and get a higher angle. When I'm at the pool hall, I'll set it on the, the countertop behind me and extend it, and then I get a, a good height, a good angle to view the table as I'm playing. So really, really versatile. You can do a lot with this. And I think it's only like 12 or 13 bucks. It's incredible. And it's also a, I don't use it, but it's also a selfie stick. It's got a little remote control that, that pops out of the base. And you can use that to take pictures with your phone. You can, just, you can just go like this and walk around and use it as a selfie stick as well. So that's a, a, an extremely good value. There are a whole bunch of knockoffs of this style of cell phone tripod available on eBay and Amazon and all kinds of other places. And I've tried a couple of them. They're, they're all very inexpensive, but the, the, uh, there are other cheap ones that you do not want. They just fall apart. They're really cheaply made. But this particular one, for whatever reason, they got lucky with the design. It's all plastic, but it's still... Uh, works well and holds together. It's worked so well that I bought two of them. And I keep one in my case, my pool cue case, so I've always got it. And the other one I keep at home here so I don't have to remember which one is where. I, I just got one at home that I can use wherever I want around the pool table here. This is the Plantronics PLT microphone. It's a wireless microphone headset. So it has a little earpiece and it, it, the, the microphone folds like this. And you just put the earpiece in your ear and put the body of it over the back of your ear. And then the microphone comes here. Now, I've used this a few times at the pool hall when I've wanted to do a live stream while I'm playing. So I can talk on this while I'm playing. I've had intermittent success. I've had it work where it's very legible. And then I had one session 
where I thought it was working well and it wasn't. It was just popping and crackling. So I'm not sure what the difference is. I have had this work very well. I've used it here at home as well. And uh, the audio was very legible. So this is a really specialized thing. I don't know if a lot of you are going to be in the market for something like that. And I've only used it a few times. But I intend on using this more in the future. It's a Bluetooth device. So if you're either going to need to connect it to the Bluetooth on your cell phone if you're recording video that way or to the Bluetooth on your, your home computer. This is a real recent acquisition and I haven't used it much. This is a body camera. It's got a, a little uh, pocket clip on it. It's intended to clip onto your pocket or you could clip it onto a shirt like this. And you just wear it and it records video, 1080p video. It's got a tiny little screen for you to see what it's recording, but it records 1080p. And then what's really cool about it is on the top, the, the lens rotates 180 degrees. So it, it'll, it'll, it, right now it's pointing to the left and you can turn it to point up and turn it to point down. So if you wanted to, and this is going to be a really wide angle lens. So if you had a situation where you're trying to record the pool table but you're, you can't get your cell phone, you can't mount your cell phone easily anywhere, this might work because it's such a wide angle, you can probably clamp it to the end of the light real close to the table, and it'll still have a wide enough angle. And because the lens rotates, you can mount it and then spin the lens until you can see the pool table. So um, I've used this just a couple of times, the big reason why I purchased this is because the battery lasts for up to six hours. So if I knew I was going to put in a long session at the pool table, I can tell this to start recording and it'll just go for six hours. The disadvantage to this guy is when it records the video, it records it in 10 minute segments. So it'll record six hours worth, but you'll have six videos per hour. So if you wanted to make a longer video, you'll have to bring it into some editing software and stitch it together. Everybody knows what this is. It's GoPro. <laughs> there is not a, an affiliate link in the description for this because there are so many models. I, I use this on a headband. So I've got the headband here. Is you can do this, and then when I'm shooting a shot, you're getting close to a, an eye view of what I see when I'm shooting the shot. You don't want to use a GoPro up above the table because... It's such a wide angle that the, the edges of the table just get curved. You get, you get, well, they call it pinholing or something, but you get curved edges. So it's not good for that. The last camera that I use uh, fairly frequently is this one. And this is a, a DSLR. So this isn't designed specifically for video. This is a still camera. Mine is, happens to be a Nikon D750. I have been a photographer since high school. So that's over 40 years ago. My photography is available on fineartamerica.com if you're interested. This camera also does video. It'll do 1080p and 4K video. You're going to need a HDMI port on your DSLR camera, but you're going to need a HDMI, which is what this is, to USB cable. But you're also going to need a video capture device. And this is the one that I bought. It's really inexpensive. I think it's only around 20 bucks. You can spend up to 100 bucks for a video capture card. But what this, what this does is it, it takes the HDMI cable from your camera, plugs in here, and changes it to USB to a signal that your computer can understand. So now, now you need a USB cable from here to go into a USB port in your computer. I use the uh, software program called o OBS. And it's uh, free software. Just look it up on the Internet. But it is a video and audio studio. It's a recording studio. But basically what OBS does is think of it as a TV studio. You can connect a camera and another camera and a microphone and whatever, you know, different devices all into there and then assemble them on the screen. So like, for example, in my rack of the week, you see the, the, the video of the pool table. You see a selfie camera of me in the corner. You see some text on the screen. You see the logo and the images and a white background and borders 
You can do all kinds of things. You're basically creating a scene on your computer screen with images and text and all these input devices. So OBS software is what accomplishes that. The other software that I use is Adobe Photoshop. So um, I'll use that quite often to create the thumbnails for my YouTube videos. To create the actual videos, I use a program called Filmora. Pretty user-friendly. There is a little bit of a learning curve, but you can get started on it. I did. When I started using Filmora, I knew nothing about how to edit a video. And I've gotten better over the year and a half or two years that I've used it. It would be a whole nother video to explain how all that works. But I just want you guys to be aware, OBS, Filmora, and Photoshop. So those are the three pieces of software that I would recommend you look into if, uh, if you're interested in this kind of thing. So that's what I use to make my videos. I want to say thank you very much to my patrons and YouTube supporters and others. You, uh, your donations have helped me upgrade, and so I really appreciate that. I hope that you've so found some of this information uh, useful, and I really would appreciate it if you uh, click on the affiliate links in the description. Thank you for watching. See you next time on Shortstop on Pool.